All right, so I'm going to talk for a second about the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. Now, before we get started, I just want to let you know I really don't care much about the trial overall, the outcome. Um, do I think at some point and their marriage or their relationship, maybe Johnny backhanded her if she was mouthing off? Probably. Do I believe that she hit him and, you know, I guess crapped on his bed? Yeah, absolutely. So I don't really care about the what happens or whatever. I'm that there's another hero there. The point that I'm here to talk about is their storytelling on the stand. One of the things that you can tell that is a major difference is not just that a lot of people will point out that Johnny Depp has a lot of charisma and he, you know, he has he's charismatic and stuff. And they'll say, well, you know, Amber comes off cold and a little uh whatever, you know, like maybe like she's faking it or playing a role. Here's the thing. Both of them are playing a role. They are testifying and they are telling stories. How true are they? I don't care. It's up to you. But I can tell you there are tells when somebody is trying to put together a story and make it fit for themselves to make it say what they want it to say. Okay. And one of the problems you have is that different personalities tend to exaggerate and minimize certain things. It's not just a perspective of telling it from how you see it or, you know, you're in a different location. So maybe you didn't see all the things that happened or maybe from your perspective, this seemed like it is how it happened. The other problem is, is that a lot of times we like to cast ourselves as the hero or the victim of a situation. And sometimes we're neither. And other times we're just an observer. And other times we're just involved. But we're again, we're, we're maybe a catalyst for the problem. But a lot of us like to put ourselves in there as either the hero or the victim and minimize our faults and maximize the other people's faults. So we're going to go over a situation that is referred to as the stairs uh, incident or something or the stairway well incident or something. And we're going to show how that it was told four times, once by Johnny Depp. Once by his uh, security, a guy named McGivern, another time by Amber Heard, and another time by Whitney Heard. And the one thing you'll notice is by all of them, they are drastically, drastically different. But we're going to actually, I'm actually going to play them out so you can see them, say their part in its entirety. And then we're going to go over the story. Now, I'm going to start with McGivern's testimony because personally, in my opinion, this is the most correct, not only because he has... He has less to gain out of being a victim or in whatever, but because his is the most complete story. And this is the first thing that you can tell how a person is trying to frame it as themselves, either put themselves in a good light with the other person in a bad light. Because listen to how much detail he has compared to the other people who are involved in the story. Let's take a listen. Um, Ms. Heard? And her sister at that time, um, Whitney had had come in. They were both on the the middle level, the office level. Um, and I, I saw Miss Heard throw a Red Bull can from her position um, that struck Mr. Depp in the back. Anything else that you recall? At that point, I moved closer to Mr. Depp. I didn't care um, that I was in the middle of their conversation at that point. I didn't want my client getting hit with anything else. So I stood right by Mr. Depp. Um, the verbal uh, onslaught continued from, from both of them. Um, Mr. Depp was giving as good as he got at that point. Um, he was he was angry and agitated. Um, at one point, Miss Heard threw something else, uh, either a purse or some sort of bag or something that she had up there. Um, I was able to knock it away so it didn't hit him. At one point, she spit at him. Um, what do you remember Ms. Heard saying to Mr. Jeez. Uh, there was, you're a fucking cunt and washed up. Um, 
you're a fucking cunt. Uh, which, which he called her as well. Um, you're again, the, the deadbeat dad shit. Um, yeah, I don't even remember what the fight was about, but it was, um, it was pretty, the F word is my favorite word and it was being thrown around to the point where I was uncomfortable. <laughs> So. And how did Mr. Depp respond to Ms. Hurd's behavior? Oh, he was mad. He was upset, um, especially after she tried to spit on him. Um, at one point, Ms. Hurd and her sister left um, Penthouse Five. I imagine they went into penthouse four or possibly over to penthouse three. I don't know. They were all adjoining. Mr. Depp um, went upstairs and rearranged her closet for her. Um, threw down probably every rack of clothing and shoes. Um, threw one, at least one, down the stairs. Um, yeah, he, he, he was upset. Where was Miss Heard when Mr. Depp rearranged her closet, as you said? Can't say for sure, but she was not in penthouse five. She was either in four or three. And you mentioned Miss Heard's sister, Whitney. Do you recall when she arrived in the evening? So Whitney wasn't there when we first all walked into Penthouse Five. Um, when Miss Lloyd and I stepped out to give them some space, she must have <laughs> excuse me. She must have come in at some point because she was in there when we got when we walked back. Did you see Miss Heard again that evening after Mr. Depp was in her closet? I did, yeah. She must have heard what was going on and not been too pleased. So she shortly after re-entered um, Penthouse 5 as I was trying to get Mr. Depp out of there. And So her and her sister both came back in. Um, we were on the middle level, so her office level of, of Penthouse 5 at that point. Um, she was agitated. Mr. Depp was agitated. Uh, I felt it was time to get Mr. Depp out of the situation. So I stepped in between Miss Heard and Mr. Depp, um, telling Mr. Depp that we were, that we were leaving and that it wasn't up to him anymore. Um, at that point, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a, a fist and an arm come across my right shoulder. And uh, I heard and saw a closed fist um, contact Mr. Depp in the left side of his face. And whose fist was that? That was Miss Heard's fist, Amber Heard's fist. And where was, where was Whitney when this occurred? Can't say for sure, but I'm guessing, or my best guess is behind um, Amber. How did Mr. Depp respond when he was punched? <laughs> the initial look on his face, um, Kind of mirrored mine, uh, kind of a look of shock, like what just happened? Where did that come from? Um, at that point, uh, I wasn't going to let Mr. Depp get hit anymore, so I moved him down the last flight of stairs to the lower level um, and told him we're leaving. It, like it wasn't, it wasn't up to him anymore. Um, just for his safety, I, I didn't. Okay. Now notice what happened there. You have 
McGivern saying that there was an incident where he comes in, there's an incident on the stairway, there's a little back and forth, I'm pushing some, shoving some, whatever. Then there's the incident with Johnny Depp, as they said, rearranging her closet. And he's throwing stuff down and knocking it over, doing the whole thing. And then as he's leaving, there is another incident on the stairway between Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. But you'll notice, according to McGivern, is between the two of them. And Amber Heard reaches over him to strike Johnny Depp. Now notice in Johnny Depp's testimony, what is missing? Five area, which was where uh, Ms. Heard had her office at the top of the stairs. And so the, the stairs came down and then there was a, a landing and then another set of stairs went down the opposite direction. Uh, and uh, this took place on the landing um, where she was uh, coming out, you know, trying to uh, well, trying to get to me, trying to hit me, trying to do anything she could. And um, and then Whitney, her sister, was there who, <clears throat> who stepped in the way. And uh, interesting thing that was, was that inter what was interesting was that now is that Whitney stepped in front of Amber and was facing Amber to stop Amber and uh, and uh, when she was in between us, Amber snuck in the, she reached, got the roundhouse in and, and uh, just nailed me on the, on the cheekbone. Do you call, recall what Miss Heard was upset about at this time? I do not. I really don't. And was anyone else in the uh, pen, in Penthouse Five with you and Whitney and Miss Heard? Um, by that time, Mr. McGivern had been called. I believe that um, um, actually Debbie, as I remember, Debbie Lloyd was at the front door of. Penthouse five, standing by the door. Mr. McGivern was kind of at the bottom of the last uh, group of stairs. And uh, and then the thump happened and um, I got myself out of there, out of the situation and I walked down the stairs to Mr. McGivern just to say, let's, let's get out of here, you know? Um, and I, I remember that something was thrown from up there. I don't recall what it was, but something was uh, thrown at me. It, was, it seemed like it was like a, I don't know if it was a, a bag of like pens or, or, or but it was, it was from her office area what is missing you're missing the part where he rearranges the closet why because that shows bad on him personally i think he should have mentioned it because i think it's fine even if he did he just says i was angry i was upset i went around and knocked over a bunch of clothing racks but if you notice that is missing from his testimonies and notice how how his testimony happens Honestly, his testimony is, it's truncated. It's missing that. And so what do you have? You have the part where he goes up the stairs, and then you have the part where he's struck and they leave. So you see where the, where the inconsistency can be, is that, according to McGivern, he went up there, there was some stuff, there was some scuffling. Then there's a big passage of time, and now everybody has moved from where they were before, but they're back on the stairwell. And that's when the punch happens. So Johnny Depp is, is sitting there on the stand and he's trying to recreate it, but he's trying to skip the part where he threw all of the clothes racks down. And so he 
just sort of scuffs that part up and avoids it. And it does sound a little wrong. It's definitely different than McGiffin, his own bodyguard. But if you notice, he does put himself and then Whitney and then uh, Amber in there. In that order, McGivern is not in it, in, in the middle when he gets punched. And I have a feeling that's because when he first went up the steps, it was him, Whitney, and Amber. And Amber probably did reach over Whitney to grab a hold of him or do something. There wasn't a punch thrown yet, however. there was They were separated because McGivern comes up and separates them. Then he rearranges the closet. Then on his way back out, this time, Amber and Whitney come back. and. She reaches over McGinnis and punches him. And so the reason why McGinnis is left out of Depp's is because Depp is skipping a whole part. And he doesn't have, he hasn't constructed in his mind a way to get McGinnis out of the way. So he just leaves Whitney in between him and Amber. And so she becomes the one who has reached over for the punch. See, he's telling the story and he's got all of the details except for the one issue. And that is where Whitney is. Now, here's the thing that's interesting is we're going to listen to Amber Heard tell her way the story goes. And of course, it's going to be totally different. And of course, she's going to be trying to cast herself in the best light. I said he, I called him a pussy and, met, and said something about, you know, I'm screaming at him angrily. Um, I, I, I at least called him a, a fucking pussy. I don't know what else I said, but I was screaming at him because he threw this can at me and everything else that had happened. And when I did that, he bolted up the stairs. <laughs> and, you know, there was only, I mean, he, he, was up, he was up the first flight of stairs. Again, I'm on the mezzanine, which is in between two flights of stairs. Bolted up the steps. Um, and I, I, I don't know... I don't know how he managed to get his hand in my hair so fast, but he had his um, hand on the back of my my head, my hair, and kind of was yanking me down and um, hit me in the face with this cast he had. Um, I just remember this this brief struggle we had before kind of break away Whitney, my sister. Um, all of a sudden put herself in between Johnny and I. Uh, she just threw herself like in the line of fire or whatever. She just all of a sudden was there and was trying to get Johnny to stop. Um, her back was to the staircase. And Johnny swings at her. And I just see my little sister with her back on face her back to the staircase and Johnny swings at her and I don't even wait don't even wait for any other I don't hesitate I don't wait I just in my head instantly think of Kate Moss and the stairs and I swung at him and all of my relationship to date with Johnny I hadn't landed a blow and I hit him, like actually hit him. So now if you notice, there's this whole thing about, oh, I thought he was going to throw her down the stairs. He, she brings up a former relationship and the supposed thing of him throwing someone down the stairs and says, I had to punch him because I was defending my sister. I was defending my sister. She's the hero. See what happened there? She's not a victim. She is not a victim. Even in her own story, she's not a victim. She's a survivor. She's a hero. She's a hero because she's saving her sister. So she is a hero. And so you have her tell the story. But again, what does she do? She takes the first part of the story that was her and throwing stuff and being crazy. She takes that part and she completely erases all of that and says, Johnny threw stuff. And then Johnny goes up the steps. And then she skips skips right ahead to the punch being thrown and then says he goes proceeds to go ahead and tear up her closet and rearrange it and destroy everything. So she also tells it out of, out of order. But why is she telling it out of order? Because if she tells it in the correct order, Whitney is no longer there. Whitney is no longer in between them. Whitney is no longer in a point of being needing to be saved by her. And therefore, 
it doesn't fit with her her story of her being the hero saving her sister. And so, again, she tells it out of order, and her punch comes earlier because she's trying to make herself the hero. Now we're going to listen to Whitney, and I don't remember her last name, but Whitney heard her sister's testimony. Trash bag, you know, whatever. They were saying horrible things to one another. She was calling him old and fat. It was a fight. They were saying really nasty things to one another. I leave them in the kitchen to go up the stairs. I was trying to calm Amber down, hopefully get her back into my apartment. And Debbie had come up with me. De- and Debbie, who's Debbie? Debbie was his nurse. At Debbie the time. Lloyd? Uh, yes, I believe that was her name. Okay. Um, so we're with Amber on the mezzanine level. I'm sorry, just so we know who we're is. Is it you and Debbie that are with Amber? or is it- Yes, Debbie, okay. Debbie, Amber, and I are on the little mezzanine area. Um, and as I mentioned, the mezzanine looks overlooks the, the kitchen and the living room. So Johnny then hurls a Red Bull can and it hits Debbie in the back. She didn't even react. She didn't really seem to notice. But I'm, I'm standing up there talking. Or I'm standing up there. I'm at the top of the stairs with my back to the stairs. And that's when Johnny runs up the stairs. And my again, I'm facing Amber. He comes up behind me, strikes me in the back, kind of just somewhere over here. He strikes me in the back. I hear Amber shout, don't hit my fucking sister. She smacks him, lands one. And then he grabs, at that point, that's when Travis runs up the stairs after Amber landed one. And But by that time, Johnny had already grabbed Amber by the hair with one hand and was whacking her repeatedly in the face with the other as I was standing there. Travis pulls them apart. I get Amber into mine. I close the doors behind me and lock them. I then hear Johnny's voice <clears throat> shouting. Uh, uh, never mind. With John. Okay, sorry. I hear Johnny's voice shouting, "You! F- I fucking hate you. I hate you both. You fucking cunts. You fucking whores. And I hear crashing. I hear crashing and banging and smashing. And he starts screaming like an animal. Now, if you notice, what is the difference there? First of all, almost everything's different with Whitney's. I mean, she's, she's changed almost every detail, practically. But one of the no- things you'll notice is that when Whitney tells the story, who's the hero? She is. Amber's not the hero. She's trying to protect her sister, Amber. She's there. Johnny, you know, hits her in the shoulder when reaching over her or whatnot, which might have happened. That might have, when he first time he came up the stairs and she was there, he might have reached over her and bumped her or kind of did something like that, that might have happened. Or he might have been trying to just scoot past her and she's in the way and he knocks her. Who knows what happened? But the point is, she tries to cast herself as the hero. Yet again, she's trying to do that. So you see, the motivation is different. In Johnny's case, he's, he, he is the victim in a sense, but he's also trying to make sure he stays the victim by not pointing out his own faults. And therefore, he messes up the story because he can't get from point A to point C and so he erases B and makes C the new B. He, he now just he changes the story because he's trying to avoid not looking like the victim. And again, you can say, well, he is victim. I'm like, okay, fine. I agree with that. The point is, is he's kind of trying to, trying to make himself the victim and it actually messed up his storytelling. But his storytelling is so good. He's such a good storyteller. You want to believe him, even though it, he's obviously leaving stuff out and not telling the whole story. Whitney wants to be the hero. Amber wants to be the hero. And so their stories don't mesh because they're trying to tell it in such a way that they are the hero saving their sister from Johnny Depp. And therefore, you end up with this insanely mismatched story. And like I said when I began, what really happened, probably closer to what Mickey Fern said, where stuff was being thrown and people were screaming and yelling at each other and vulgarity like crazy. Red Bull cans being thrown, uh, getting people up. You know, Jeff Depp goes up there, confronts them with Amber and Whitney both on the landing. McGinnis ends up taking him out of there. Even that, there's a spot where supposedly uh, McGinnis and the doctor woman left and then came back. So there's even a chunk missing in, you know, of time of exactly what happened there. But the point is that McGee is probably the closest. That, that first occasion happened. Then they separated. The girls go in one place. Johnny proceeds in a fit of anger and frustration to tear down a bunch of clothes racks and throw some stuff around. McGivern says, okay, it's time to go. Let's get out of here. 
They start leaving. Amber Heard shows back up. Uh, Whitney trailing behind her, I guess. And then she sees Depp. Some stuff happens. Who knows exactly what happened? A punch is thrown. And, and of course, Johnny Depp, according to McGinnis, said this was his fault. And they, they leave. So the issue is, is why can't they all tell the story right? Because they have different motivations for how they tell the story. And that's the secret to good storytelling is you have to get into a person's mind and figure out what is their motivation for telling the story. So is your protagonist an anti-hero? Then some of the details are going to be weird because they're not going to necessarily make sense because he's trying to put himself as a hero in spite of, this, in spite of the fact that he's actually kind of more of a villain. Is your guy just a, a true blue hero? Well, then he's going to tell details as perfect as they are, including his own faults. Is your person a villain telling the story? Well, he's going to tell it as though, you know, he's right because everybody else is terrible to him. They all persecute him and he, he you know, they made him like this. You know, think the Joker movie. And then you have the other idea, which is the observer, the McGivern story, where he's going to just pretty much include everything that he remembers and just sort of tell it how he remembers it. And, and obviously some of his might be slanted in one direction because he does have you know, that's his boss, but he's going to tell it pretty much how he remembers it. So again, telling a good story. How do you tell a good story? Motivation. And if you want to avoid the traps that they did, like, I mean, I'm not telling you how to lie on the stand, but if you're, if you, you get up on the stand and you have to tell a story, you have to remember your motivation. And maybe you need to say, in this case, I shouldn't put myself as a victim. I should put myself as a person experiencing something and tell the most complete the story that makes the most sense. Like, anyways, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little uh, taste of the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard drama that's going on. And uh, if you enjoyed it, you know, I ask you to do all the YouTube stuff where you like things and share and all that. And if you hated it, dislike it and tell me how much I suck in the comments. Anyway, thank you for listening. God bless. What's up? I am protective over my baby sister. When he laid hands on her, I don't know what I did, but I know I jumped in between the actions that I saw could lead to a fatal injury to my sister. She was standing on top of a flight of the stairs and she has never hurt anyone in her life and she does not deserve 